Okay, you'll have to forgive me if it's a little bit windy today. The wind is blowing quite well. But I thought I'd go for a short walk just in the Comiskey area. So it's probably not going to be much interest unless you're from this area. And I'm only going to go for a short walk. But what it is, I've had COVID again, unfortunately. So I haven't been out the house at all until today when I've posted COVID negative at last. <clears throat> so all that sunshine, etc., that you had, I was sat inside baking, unable to go anywhere. I haven't been to the shop even. I wanted to go to the shop for ages. I wasn't even able to go there. So I thought, what the heck? I'm going to go out. I'm going to do a little bit of filming. This little house here on the corner, some of you will remember it as Billy's Kebab Shop. If you're from the local area. Or, going back even further, when I was a kid it was a butcher's. We're going down into Hamilton Road now. This little place here used to be run, on the left here, used to be run by the council, I think, for, I think it was something to do with their home and garden people. It was either there or where this house has been built now. Because the house that's there now and um, used to be like a little yard. Now I get them the two mixed up, I have to admit. But the council used to either store or repair lawnmowers there at one point, I seem to recall. If anyone is from Conniskey and you used to live in Hamilton Road, well, here we are. This is what it's like on a lovely day. tell you what it's nice being out the house I've been going absolutely stir crazy I dare not go anywhere because I don't want anyone to catch anything even though this version of Covid I found is uh, far milder shall we say than the Covid I had last year it's more like a cold really than anything still tired though but that hasn't really improved since the first batch but I'm going to get even more tired unless I get out walking again so let's get out and have a look around We've got Queen's Avenue there There used to be, down that housing estate there, a place called Golfding Cottage. Now I can see it on loads of maps, going back to the, goodness me, from the 1800s right up to the 60s, but whenever you mention it to anyone, they're like, Golfding Cottage? Never heard of it. Are you sure you don't mean the farm? No, it's not the farm, that's the Sir Gawain now. There was a place called Golfding Cottage and it was sort of out on its own a little bit. I haven't been able to find any photographs of it or anything. But I bet there's someone out there that goes, Golfing Cottage, oh yeah. Oh, I used to live there. There's a little bit of a gust today. I haven't got a windshield on this mic, so hopefully it's not too blowy. I couldn't be bothered faffing with the road wireless goes and setting them all up. Because they are far better mics. Got 
the school just down the way there. chest making its presence known. <clears throat> it's having a bit of a workout for a change. King's Road. I back in the past used to be able to drive all the way out of King's Road and out onto the main road but they built the flats a few years ago, the 70s and you can't get out that way anymore closed off. I was just stopped by a gentleman who's talking about traffic issues in the local area. It is um, a bit bad at, at times these days. Thought I'd have a quick nose in the uh, Common Ski Cemetery. I think that the cemetery is closed now. Um, the, the new cemetery over at uh, Kelterton is now open and in use because I think this ended up getting filled so there was no, nowhere left for anyone to go. I'm not sure why that patch is empty or if the, the uh, oh crikey what do you call them, the stones have been moved perhaps or damaged. It's an awful shame when you see things like that, see where the stones have been pulled over. It'd be nice if there was some kind of, I don't know, a community fund or something just to um, Pair them, I suppose, put them back up and make them secure and what have you, rather than just uh, slinging them on the floor. been here many times over the years filling up bottles of water to go and put flowers on the grave etc as I say I haven't been anywhere near a shop because I need to get some flowers to put on my nan's grave <clears throat> I'm sure she's waving her finger at me wherever she is now See, it goes all the way up the back there nowadays, but even that's full now. I suppose you can't stop the, per the progression of time. Aeroplane flying up overhead. Wonder where he's off to. Thank you. 
about trimming, making the place look nice. Very serene. And I know, just pause and I'm going to pop and say hello to Nan. <coughs> yeah, if you look straight ahead, see all the leaning gravestones forward and back. It's a shame, isn't it? There's not some kind of uh, a system in place whereby they look after them. I suppose it's going to be expensive to do it in perpetuity, but I don't know. I'm sure that uh, we'd be able to put some kind of fund together, wouldn't we, to get them done? I bet there's a local builder who wouldn't mind even chipping in a little bit and giving them a hand so you know what they're doing. Yeah, it is nice being out the house. It's unusual as well. feel almost alien after having been stuck in for so long. It's only been like a week and a half or something, a couple of weeks nearly. River view leading to Upper Brim Road. And we've got Upper Brim Road just across the way here. A bit further down we've got Uplands Avenue, this is Red Hall here. Most of this lot was built in the early 60s. There are a few of these uh, chocolate block types, um, what do you call them, speed humps along here, but they're not being overly successful really, because the people who speed just bump over them at 40 mile an hour. them correctly and you're just scraping on the bottom of the drafted trains. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. Look. But the uh,
sort of a semi-circle things that go quite a long way across the road. I prefer those really. Where they've got sort of a climb up and a climb down. The chocolate block things don't really help when you're in a little car because I don't drive a, an SUV or like most people do these days you see four by fours and SUVs and what have you so their wheelbase just goes right across these uh, little chocolate block things they don't, they don't really touch it at all so they just hammer past them at 40 whereas if you're in a normal car you have to slow down for them and then you get the SUVs tailgating you all the way down the road so they can be a little bit of a nightmare Hillside Avenue yeah Hillside Avenue no, up and down New Dozy I used to play on there years ago, come down it on a, on a skateboard and you used to be able to go right up to the top of that road and there were garages, I don't know if you can see now let's put this on there there we go, at last zoom it's not a very good zoom though, but right at the top there now there's housing. There never used to be housing up there at the very top. It was garages and then there was a bit of greenery. There was quite a lot of greenery when I was a kid. Um, and then across a few fields there was a quick save that they'd not long built. Well the quick save is long gone. It's a Morrison's these days, but in between Morrison's and the top of Hillside there is now housing and all of the green fields that I used to go down getting blackberries and what have you have, uh, have all gone, they're all big housing estates now massive housing estates all the way down the uh, Golfton Drive and the garages, well there's not many left I think these are probably some of the only garages left and they're in a dilapidated state I did used to rent one on the end, but it was leaking water through the roof. So uh, I got rid of it. And I don't think anyone's taken it on since, because that's the lock I put on there. And the, ga the garage door hasn't been fixed either. It's a shame, really. The council seems to be leaving those to uh, fall to bits. Possibly with purpose. Maybe they're going to build housing on them as well. is the old Red Hall garage. As you can see, stopped serving fuel here many years ago. There's a little cafe here these days. It was a news agent for a, a while. A chap called Simon, he run it for many, many years. I think he gave up probably about four, three or four years ago. And now it's sunrise breakfast. They, I think that they deliver as well, these guys. They've got quite a good rep. I haven't had anything from there, to be honest. But and the Red Hall pub. That's still here. The old chip shop. It's all Chinese now, Magic Kitchen. You've got the new Mark Pharmacy. other places but uh, it's currently a Morrison's local but here's your red hall I remember seeing people sat on the roof there years ago having a pint you can come past these flats and they lead through to um, St Mark's Avenue Like I 
say there used to be garages there. You can see there's a house that it's washing up. That was where the garages were, or some of them. And behind that tree, just over the wall of this house, there's some white houses in the background. They're all, well, I call them new. They're probably about five years old now or something, but that's new to me. Coming up on Merlin Avenue now. It's an interesting one, really, on Merlin Avenue. Because um, I'm sure some of the old timers would know this. But at the top of St. Mark's Avenue, where it meets Merlin Avenue, just a little bit further up from that van with the, uh, the stripes on, on the left hand side there, there was a polio hospital. And in the late 50s, early 60s, it was in a derelict state. And the local kiddies used to go there and play in there and break the windows and cause all kinds of mischief. And the parents used to go mad because it was the polio hospital. Because at one time, this was all fields here. This, this was just all fields. And the polio hospital sat out the way on its own because they didn't want anyone to get polio. But by the time the housing estate was being built, the polio hospital still existed. Right. I'm probably going to head kind of back. But... Uh, I'll take a bit of a longer route. Just nice to be out. For anyone who doesn't live in the UK, it might be interesting because you can see what you know, basic housing estates and general living is like. And yeah, we do have the big Walmarts and the big Asda's and what have you. Um, but we also have big estates. And we've also got estates of houses that are quite a distance from a shop. So say your dad wanted to go and get the newspaper or something, he's got a bit of a trek these days because a lot of the smaller shops have closed, unfortunately, over the years make way for these uh, bigger enterprises but it doesn't help people who don't drive I mean we're lucky me and the miss because we both drive so we're all right for the moment at least but both of our parents have had to stop driving in the last couple of years and it's quite difficult for them if they need to get out to get to uh, to get anything or just nip to the doctors, for example. Because these days you have to go to the doctors miles away, whereas in the past you just walked down the street to the doctors. Up the road there, we've got Brindiva School. I've avoided the school because the kiddies are running around and some middle-aged bloke walking around with a camera past the school. Not a good plan. <laughs> so I'll keep him clear of there. I thought what I'd do is walk down here because we can head towards the Navy Club, etc. And the old the old field where the tips used to be. They're not there any longer I'm, I'm afraid. I think they filled them in in the 60s. But also of interest here is the Buckley Line. <coughs> There's a really interesting uh, documentary one of the local guys around here did recently. 
about the Buckley line. There was a driver um, of one of the trains uh, and he did an interview with him and he was having a chat about the Buckley line and life as a train driver back in the day. I thought it was quite interesting. Now if I remember, and this is a big if because Covid brain kicks in, I'll try and uh, put a link to the gentleman's interview. Because it'd be interesting to people, local people who uh, remember the Buckley line and what have you. But the Buckley line kind of follow the route where this bus is coming from. Maybe slightly um, maybe slightly to the left of the road, I'm not sure. It predates me by goodness me, I think it'd been gone for about ten years by the time I was born, I think. But it did head up this way because there is behind these houses a little bit of ground whereby the Buckley line used to come through. I'm not quite sure exactly where it is but just up the top there there is a bit of land on the Red Hall Avenue side that's still not being built on and that's because the Buckley line went through there. We'll have to try one day and do a bit of a, a follow of the Brutif Pass. We have done up the top end of Connors Quay. Um, there's, a, there's a section of the old Buckley line that still exists, but as a nature walk. And myself and Anne-Marie walked down there. Goodness me, it must be a couple of years ago now. There you go, you've got a lovely view here. I don't know if the camera will pick it up because it is quite far away. But across the way there, you've got the steelworks and the, the coatings area. Used to be a major employer here, the steelworks, years ago. I think it was something insane, like 12,000 people made redundant. And then this area was pretty downtrodden for years because the people who got redundant early got out and got all the jobs. And then everyone was unemployed for donkey's years. Absolutely donkey's years, probably a decade or so. And it was all like manual workers, you know, like steel workers, coal miners and things like that. Because Mrs Thatcher, who was in charge at the time, was trying to change our economy. For better or worse, I don't know, but um, to a more finance related, commercial related economy, I think. Whether that has saved us in the long run, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm no uh, political expert. I know that we could do with more power stations, etc. now, because uh, Russia's going to be turning off the gas, etc. soon. So maybe it was a bit short-sighted of us to close everything before we had everything in place to ensure we could uh, generate enough power to wait for all this traffic to go. Yeah, wait until we have enough um, alternative energy sources to power the country without closing the uh, everything down first but we didn't seem to do that really but never mind do you get a good view of the steelworks here there's another good view on actual on on the actual uplands avenue you do get quite a nice view there as well yeah it's getting quite windy now so Apologies if it's a little bit blowy. Well, 
that there might be a couple of you saying, I used to live here, or my granddad used to live down this road or whatever. And I will be doing more walks, don't worry, I'm not just going to uh, pack it in. If nothing else, I think the exercise is really good. <clears throat> Pensioners bungalows down there. A few flincher wagons out. I think they're doing a few upgrades to housing at the moment. Putting in carbon dioxide detectors and things like that. Insulation and making places more energy efficient and what have you. These houses here, just on the end, are reasonably new. I'm not quite sure how old. I'd say about four years, ish, something like that. Might be a bit longer. Heading now towards the uh, the Navy Club. Got Princess Street here. go straight down there you'll end up in Mold Road eventually. I think there's a something going on over there. I don't think it's football. Maybe fitness of some kind. Everyone's in shorts. Here's the Navy Club. Still going. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the Navy nowadays but it's still going used to be the Kingdom Hall, just at the bottom, the black, the black covered building at the bottom, but that has now closed, I think it's now housing. tips down here. Bit of work going on in the Navy. It's usually a good night out in the Navy Club. Thoroughly recommend it. Yeah, kiddies playground. Empty as it should be because the kids should be all be in school. <laughs> Unless they're skiving. Now this tip here, there were three gentlemen used to live on here, and there is a video online. I must admit I don't know the, the title of it, but if you search for Konovsky tip, uh, they're probably called tramps or something like that, um, or homeless people or whatever. Uh, there were three gentlemen that used to live here. There was a, a pond with like a makeshift shack. These chaps used to live in this shack. And someone came along as they were evicted because they were filling the, the pond in. Getting awfully windy now. Though I am pretty much in the open here so I might get just a little bit further away. Comsky Cricket Club is there across the way there. Is it me or is the building gone? Like I say, I am a little bit uh, hopeless when it comes to memory. <laughs> you can see there across the way though, see the bridge? That never used to be there. You've got St Mark's Church just peeking over the top of the hill there. And then on this side we've got the other end of the Navy Club. Single engine jobby. Used to see a fair few of those years ago, but times have changed, haven't they? The 
used to be a glider club here. Well, it was in Sealand, but unfortunately there was a, a terrible crash a few years back in the 90s, I think it was, and uh, the two gliders crashed into each other. And I don't know if there were any survivors from the two sets of gliders, which was a bit of a tragedy for the area. Pity there's no cricket on today. It's a nice day for it. of some kind. Conoskey's Old People's Association. Now down here is Railway Terrace and I'll probably nip up there Key Hill. <coughs> My chest is still giving me a bit of grief, but like I say, it's nothing compared to uh, the first batch of COVID. That was that was mean. I'll head this way because there's, uh, there's a tarmac. I'm going to climb over a bank. Cable Street's coming off here now. And then Railway Terrace. I'm not quite sure why it was called Cable Street. I wonder if anyone knows. Railway Terrace is easy because the railway was right next to it. But Cable Street, I don't know. Was it because there's loads of cables? Because there is a lot of cables. house that's for sale. The building at the back of the larger red brick building that was the bank. There was a little wooden building on a hill down the bottom of Cable Street there many years ago but that that's long gone. I went to nursery there. I think the old people used to go there for a, a gathering. Well, let's just have a quick peek here the old Buckley line. This bit of road here has been extended as you can see. Now on the left hand side there there's a bit of a grassy mound. That was the second tunnel entrance. I remember it being a tunnel entrance there. It was probably filled in in the 90s. And you've also got the, um, I'll tell you what, should we go this way back? And there's Railway Terrace, just so uh, you're not missing out. And the Royal Welsh Fusiliers Hall at the end. That is, again, housing now. It was the cadets for quite a number of years. But here we go, this is the, um, the two tunnels. Let's go and have a look, actually. See if there's any evidence of the original tunnel because they, they put all of this grass, etc., down earth and filled it. I just wondered if you can see the tunnel top or anything or if it's just completely covered. Yeah, you can't really see a great deal, can you? Let's be nosy. Yeah, they've given it a a pretty good covering where it was here. Now in that bush there, sort of in the middle of the screen, there used to be, until very, very recently, I mean a few months back, 
little bits of wooden signage and I think it used to have something to do with Conorsky Station on. I don't know whether it was a timetable or if it just said Conorsky Station or whatever. But there was something there. And you can see the boards. Well, the, uh, the planks, basically, that were holding it up. And they're still in there, you know. Let's have a bit of a dig around. And here is the old tunnel. And according to the chap on the video, why there's bits of tunnel missing here is because when the train used to go through, sometimes the uh, the top of the coal would clip it and chip little bits off. <coughs> but yeah, this is the route the old train used to take. I mean, over the years, the council have done a few things to try and make it nicer for people to sit and relax. Could do with a bit of a strim. <laughs> Though there is an initiative at the moment over in Flincher about keeping um, wildflowers growing, trying to encourage wild growth. But then, could do with uh, repairing the benches though so you can sit and enjoy the wild growth. The engines used to come down here and then off onto the dockside. There were rails all over the place down here years ago. They've all gone now, I think. I don't think there's any left at all now. For a number of years there were wagons here still at the, some of the, um, the places on the dockside that sort of acquired to use as storage for their little industrial efforts that they've got going on down here but i think i think even those most of those have gone now is what's left of the old key house. 1777 until probably about 2020. <laughs> well, perhaps a bit earlier than that. It's been turned into housing now. Smashing little pub that was. I used to pop in there sometimes and um, there was a, another famous local face from Conorsky, Vic Williams. He used to be in there. Alan and Tyrrell and they used to be chatting about um, local history basically. There was a gate here at one time by the look of things. I must admit I don't recall it. Now I'm heading up onto a place us locals know as the Rock. I 
I hope it's come out okay because it's a, quite a bright day and I, a lot of the time I can't see the screen so fingers crossed it's pointing in the right direction <coughs> yeah my chest is still not perfect and I'm doing my best to keep clear of humans at the moment just because I've only been clear since this morning or this afternoon even so uh, I don't want uh, to endanger anyone though I'm sure I'll be fine now the line was quite faint for the last couple of days and other friends have had similar uh, and then it's gone <laughs> and gone for good you know an interesting little thing here I'm assuming it was a coal chute that's all I can think of because in the back here it's it's changed a bit actually this is a recent thing I think because this little wooden affair there were more of them along here I'm fairly sure until very recently I'll have to look back I have done a few videos along this route I'm sure that this breeze block wall is a very new thing. This used to be Mr. Musgraves. You can just about see it if you look on there, see? Mr. Musgrave and Co. J. Musgrave and Work Co. Sawmills. Now when I was a little kid, my mum came down to see Mr. Musgrave and they ordered a door, a solid oak door for their house in Lower Brook Street. It cost a fortune for the time, you know. There is a tale of this dragon as well. But um, yeah, it cost an absolute arm and a leg. Um, but they overpaid him. And Mr. Musgrave walked up from here with a bowler hat on and he came to Mum's and he tipped his hat and said, just uh, let you know you've overpaid and handed over the the change he was awfully polite mum said it was an awfully nice chap and um, it's a shame that it's gone really now because it was on there for a long long time that door mum must have put it on about 1980 and it was still there goodness me um, into the 2000s but it's, uh, it's gone now, it's been replaced by a new PVC effort. I don't know if they'd actually would have bothered to get rid of the oak door if they knew how much it was worth. But, who knows? Now this is a walk down to the river bank and it's been like this now, overgrown like this for, goodness me, quite a long time probably three or four years at least if not longer and it's just been left to overgrow there's the Flincher Bridge that'll be a new sight to some of you if you're from here previously that was built in the late 90s 97 but don't quote me it was around about then and then you've got the steelworks the coatings now the coatings has been successful because you can still get steel brought in from elsewhere and coated and steel british steel um, shot and steel was always quite well regarded i believe so why on earth they stopped making steel here i don't know but it was supposed to be quite good steel and stuff made in shop but you can import steel from anywhere and get it coated so that's why the uh, coatings works has been so successful I think because you can just get steel uh, from anywhere right so I'll zoom back out again get a bit more of a bit of an overview 
you can see over there in the distance, you see there the docks. A lot of seagulls flying around there, I think there's a fishing boat in or something. This life boy appeared a few years ago. Got a plonk deer on the rock. I've never been around the back of this, I wonder if there's anything around the back. Just gonna appease my curiosity. <clears throat> oh yeah, there is D Bridge. And Wales Coast Path. I wonder where this one was from. Because there is one. If you look through my video somewhere, it's got Flanagan Moor or something along those lines. This one's got 2615 welded onto it, the rock. But that one I mentioned about uh, Flanagan Moor, it's from the Bahamas, would you believe it? And it's ancient. It's like something like 1806 from the Bahamas and for some reason it's been dragged all the way to Greenfield and plonked outside the uh, the old marketplace where the Duke of Lancaster uh, boat is out there and the play. Oh, it's nice to get outside. even if it's just for a bit of a, a walk for an hour after being stuck in again. <laughs> I don't know what that symbol is for. Maybe someone knows. I'm not sure. I'm getting back into the wind now, so apologies if it's uh, a bit blowy vehicles going over that bridge it has been a, an absolute marvel that bridge you know because the traffic in Conneskey and Shotton was just getting absolutely horrendous and although it's not brilliant now it is a million times better than it would have been if they hadn't have built that bridge because the levels of traffic have increased so much now um, oh, it's just, it'd just be absolute chaos. Again, the wind's getting up, but just below us here, it's an absolutely lovely walk down there. It's generally quite peaceful. You do get a few drug addicts down there. I've got to admit, to be honest with you, but they generally leave you alone. Just cracking on with whatever they're cracking on with. Probably crack. <laughs> I'm sure there was a gate there at some point randomly. That little, that little walkway there, it comes out into all of that beautiful greenery at the bottom there. I'll go down the main road now. Probably get a few funny looks because I've got a camera. <laughs> but there's the, um, there's the railway. That direction leads off to England basically, you can head off to Chester 
and then you can uh, head on to Manchester and Liverpool and what have you if you change over in Shotton. And then this side here, it's the North Wales coast. So if you keep on chugging that way, you'll go through Flint, Rail, Abigelli, Plandidno, etc. That's in that direction. Now there used to be a Konofsky station. Now this is only rough guesstimate, but where that green light is, just to the right of there-ish, was where Konofsky station was. Well, that's been gone since the 60s again, that was another. Um, one of Mr Beechin's cuts many years ago. Or Dr Beechin. What shall we do? I think that one of these was a shop and I think it was that one there, but don't quote me, I could be talking rubbish, but I'm fairly sure there was a shop here back in the probably 60s, 70s. I can't remember it in the 80s. It definitely wasn't there in the 90s. So. by one of the new councillors to get the place in order because it's been used as a dumping ground for many years there. Osborne House used to be on the end, on the left across the road, where those new houses are. It was starting to get a bit dilapidated. Um, and there was also a barn as well, just further up. And that's also gone now. One of the tragedies, I think, is that St Mark's School's gone. Not the hall, you've got St Mark's Church on the top of the hill there. And then on the left-hand side... See where that black car is? Just about, say, now, on the left-hand side. That's um, St Mark's Church Hall. It used to be St Mark's Infant School many years ago. And then they built, in 1920s, a new St Mark's Infant School. And I went to that one, that was my school. And sadly, about two years ago they pulled it down, which is a shame. Now all up and down this hill, again, if you have a nose through my videos, I have got one from the 60s. Um, I've got a link to one from the 60s and it shows you the hill as it was many years ago and none of these existed there was, these were all shops and old Victorian housing nowadays we've got the Indian there used to be a news agent that's gone Chinese a salon that I think is shut because I've never seen it open for years um, and key food and wine. To be fair to them, those guys help keep this place running. Because they're absolutely uh, diamond if you need something like a loaf of bread or something. A pint of milk or what have you. We should use them more often to be fair. But don't really bother because we get everything in and don't really run out very often but if you do pretty darn handy and then you got the swan pub which bit the dust probably about 2005 ish that's been converted to housing now. I think there's some kind of deal where homeless people can get 
a flat or something there. I don't know all the ins and outs, but there's people live there now anyway. It was empty for quite a number of years. And here is King's Road. Head straight up there to the cemetery again. Cars used to come driving down here, because this wasn't here. Okay, I'll call it quits there. Well, that was fun. <laughs>